Hello. Peoples um, of the internet. Yeah, what Greg said. This is Spam Johnson here, and I am making a deck builder's guide for Magic the Gathering, and I am teaching Greg. That is correct. Um, Greg so, C96, you guys Greg should C96. all know me by now. Yeah, because chances are all of you guys are coming from Greg's page. Probably. <laughs> um, hey, maybe you'll get 92 subs overnight. That would be nice. That would be nice. <laughs> so... <laughs> How this deck that I'm going to be building, I have pre-assembled so this video isn't the 45 minutes that it would normally take me to build a yes. deck using this program called Cockatrice. Yep. And um, the deck you guys see on my end is the only deck I've ever built by myself, and I used zero skill to do it. I literally took every green card I owned, put them together, and it worked. Surprisingly. Like, don't I get don't, me wrong. I don't recommend doing that. I still won, but it was one of the harder decks I've played against. Oh, I've beat you a few times with it, though. Yes, but more times than not, I have one. Yeah, I'd say it was probably like 60-40 or 70-30. Yep. Okay. So this deck that I have has not been tested. I haven't built it or tested it yet, so this is going to be a shot. And I'll be making a new deck, so I'm going to call this the Tutorial Deck. Kind of like Tutorial Island on old RuneScape. <laughs> so, um, I named my deck Azorius because that is uh, the combination of cards. This is a blue-white deck. Um, there's going to be three gods and no planeswalkers in this. I'll have, I'll explain those as we get to them. So when building a deck, the best thing to do is find a base card to do this with. Um, so after searching for about 15 minutes, I found, I'm really bad at pronouncing this, um, the god of the harvest. That's what I'll call him because I can't pronounce his first name. Uh, it's K-A-R-A-M-E-T-R-A. -A -A. Kamitra. Uh, Kar Karamitra, God of Harvests. Yes, and I lied. It's not Azorius. Crap. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Actually, you spent no. so much effort getting that title too. I might be stupid. Hold on. Oh, just possibly. Whatever. I'll put. I'll link over it. Whatever. I'm just gonna go with it. It's not a blue white. It is a green white. So I'm just gonna fix that. Okay, uh, so I'm just honestly going to rebuild the deck you have so the people on my end can see something. Yep. That was the plan here. So we are going to add one of those to the deck. So if you double click it, it'll add it. So why would you pick that card? I picked this card because um, whenever I cast a creature spell, I get to take a forest or planes out of my hand and put into the battlefield tapped. Now, a creature spell is just... Um... When a spell is when you play a card, a creature spell is when you play a creature card. Mm -hmm. So whenever I play that, I get a mana, nice. which we use to cast the cards. And this card is a devotion card because it is a god and is also indestructible. So how devotion works is um, it counts up all of the cards that it specifies. So we're, in this case, it is green and white. And as long as that is less than seven, this card is not a creature. It's just an enchantment. So, once we get a devotion of seven, which is just uh, seven different, or, yes, yeah, seven total green and white devotions to your deck out on the field, you it becomes a creature again. Oh, that's cool. So now, uh, which Greg... Which you pretty much are going to be close to if you're going to be able to cast this. Yes. So now, now that we have the base card, we have to build off of it. Now, how I normally run my decks is I would run a... About like tw somewhere between twenty-five to thirty mana. In this one, I am running twenty-five. I am running. Oh my god, I can't spell. Ethel Forest. I am running ten forests and ten planes. But that adds up to twenty, not twenty-five. No shit. Need some fiber. <laughs> this is a Silencia. That was Silencia. That was it. S E L E N S. Wow, I fucked that up. S E L E S N Y A. Silencia deck. So in this, we will be running two different clue stone. Uh, one, two clue stones. So a uh, Silencia clue stone. 
which is just when we play it, we can tap it to add either a green or a white to our mana pool. They cost three, so I am only putting two in this deck. And then I'm putting in a Signet also, so which how many, adds... How many Selesnias? Uh, two Clue Stones and three Signets. Okay. Alright, so now that we have the mana and the base creature to base our entire deck off, we can start adding other creatures. I, or other cards. I always add creatures first because creatures are the main source of the damage and right. everything in your deck, unless you are building a different type of deck, which yeah, is a I've lot. seen some crazy spell-only decks, like yes. minimal creatures. I have a wall deck that I built, and yeah. I have lost quite a few times, but I've also won just as many. So when you're building a deck, um, in this case, since we are using, we're going to be using three different gods. I'm going to get to the gods first. The first one is going to be Nylia, N-Y-L-E-A, God of the Hunt. We're going to add one of these. This also has Indestructible, and it has Devotion. Uh, and it requires a Devotion of 5 to become a creature. So and we're going to add a plus 2, plus 2 buff. Yep. Um, and other creatures you control gain Trample. And if you pay 4, 3 colorless, and 1 green, target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of the turn. That's nice. This is another God. Right now, this deck is costing forty dollars without the map. Oh yeah, I should uh, turn on. I'm gonna turn on um, price tag. Yeah, with the mana in it, I let's update the prices real quick. I have no clue where that is. I'm just guessing. <laughs> oh, Where's some of these cards tag? don't even. It's under settings. Under deck builder. Settings. See, the weird thing is now the Selesnia Clue Stone and the two gods don't have a price tag in this. Yeah, neither do the planes and forests. So clearly that's not working yet. No, the planes and the forests for me have a dollar and ninety cents. They don't have um, any for me, so I'm just gonna turn that off. I had to... I'm sorry about that, people. Those people suck. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm using deckbrew.com. That's even worse. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll figure out the price at the end, and we'll I'll put it in the video. So, next uh, thing I'm going to do. <laughs> Chocolate tree says stopped working. Oh, <laughs> it was because I tried to use the price check. Uh, I'll be with it in a second. Damn it, I have to close the program. I've probably lost all of that. That's why you save. Oh, frick. I'm going to be cutting this part out. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, man. Selesnia. Do you need the cards? I remember most of it. Selesnia, I need two clue stones and three signets. I need... Um, oops, I need to take God, not Gid. Now when I search God, that doesn't help me. So what are the two God cards? K-A-R-A-M-E-T-R-A. -A -A. Okay, that, I, you just need to give me, like, the three. And, and then, the N-Y-L-E-A. Okay. What's next? Uh, uh, all the planes and stuff? Yep. And that's as far as we got? Yep. Okay. Uh, do you have the clue stone and the signet? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn off the price feature because I crashed it. Yep, so you're all caught back up? Um, the five artifacts, two creatures, 20 land. Uh huh. Okay, cool. I'm gonna save. Okay, so after some difficulty. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. you saw all the technical difficulty if you're watching my video. <laughs> I, I'm cutting it out of mine. I, um, but there's no back. entertainment if everything goes right. Yeah, basically. Okay, so we already have the other two gods. Um, we're going for the last one, and it is Heloid, or Heloid, uh, god of the sun. He is another indestructible, and as long as we have a devotion of five to white, he's uh, no longer a cre he is a creature. And he gives other creatures vigilance, which means they do not tap when they attack. That's awesome. 
So we're gonna throw one of those. Really effect. Yeah, we're gonna throw one of those in this deck. Okay, so now that we have the three gods with our base god, with our base, <laughs> base god, ha 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 ha, Karametro, I think, or god of the harvest, yeah, we are going to be getting into the regular creatures. Woo so the first one I picked out was Boon Seder. I picked him because he is a low cost creature with a bestow. And what bestow does is it makes him into an enchantment. So you can uh, use that card as an enchantment on another creature. That creature gets plus oh, four, plus two. That's actually nice. How many of him are you running? I'm running two. Okay. So that is a fairly good card. It is cheap. It has flash, which means I can play it at any time. Nice. Oh, yeah, the so next... you can play it in the heat battle whenever. Yep. The next card that I'm going to be doing is Edelon, or Edlon, I'm not entirely sure. Of countless battles. So this card is another enchantment creature, and what it does is it has bestow like the other card, so I can equip it to another creature. And whenever, um, well, it gets plus one plus one for each creature you control, and plus one plus one for each aura you control. In this deck, I do not run any auras, so that we can ignore that. Found it finally. You didn't tell me how to spell it. How many are we uh, running? Oh, uh, two. <laughs> I did find it though. I, I took every combination of letters I could think of that would possibly make the E sound. <laughs> yep. Okay. Oh, genie. So we have Edelon of Countless Battles. The next card that we're going to go to is Heloid's Emissary. Em Emissary. I wouldn't have done that when you were already at the Hel Hel Heliod uh, page. So you already know how to spell that one, Greg? Yeah, that one I know how to spell, because we already have Heliod, God of Sun. Yep, so this is another bestow. Um, and whenever this creature attacks, or it's enchanted to a creature that attacks, I get a tap a target opponent card. So we are going to run two of those. We're running a lot of twos here because I like having a wide variety in this deck. I think it would work better than having a lot of one card. Um, you got that, Craig? I got it. So the next card we're running is a Leaf Crown Druid. Um, this is another bestow. It has reach and... Reach allows you to block flying creatures as though it had flying, even though it doesn't. Um, yeah, if we and were it gives plus this, two, plus two. If we were good at this whole YouTube thing, you would have sent me the document beforehand. <laughs> no. Do you, do you need to know how to spell that? No, I, that one I figured out. Uh, next time. Yeah. Next time. Because I'll probably be doing many more of these deck build videos. Because why not? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the next one is... Nylia's Disciple, N Y L E A. Yeah, we have a, a card already from Nylia. I'm assuming two of those. Yep. Um, whenever this card ent enters the battlefield, I gain life equal to my devotion to green. Nice. So, once again, devotion. I've already explained that, but I'll read the exact thing. Each green in the mana cost of permanence you control count towards your devotion to green. Okay, and the next one is Nyx Born, N Y X Born, okay. one word. Yep. Relicker, Eidolon, Shieldmate, Triton, or Wolf. Oh, well, I. Or Weaver. No, wait, no, that's just a Nyx, not a Nyx Born. Carry on. Alright, uh, well, I messed up a little here. Um, Nyx Born, Wolf, or uh, Shieldmate? Wolf. So this card is uh, kind of iffy, but it's cheap for just quick attack. So I run two of those um, as a bestow of five, which is kind of pricey. But I think this card was I couldn't find a card that fit this deck really well, so I threw this in there. Nice. I've had that before. And the next one is Celestial Archon, or mm -hmm. Archon. Well, I can't spell. That's right here. Um, it has a bestow of seven. It has first strike flying. It's relatively cheap. 
for all of its effects, um, and it's a 4-4. Four, four. So it's just a fairly good high-hitting card. Mm-hmm. The next card is a Evangelo, Ev Angel, Ev Angel of Heloid. EV Angel. This card works in the way that uh, when it comes into play, I put any I put the number of one one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield equal to my devotion of white. I run two of these. Um, then the next one is Ghost Blade. Ghost be Ghost Blade. Edloin, Ed, uh, the, the, the. I'm really, really bad at pronouncing. Ghostblade, Eidolon. Eidolon, there you go. Two of those? Yep. It has double strike, bestow. I think they're getting it at this point. Probably. Um, and then the last one is Hopeful Edloin, Edloin however you pronounce it. Script. Hopeful Eidolon. Eidolon. That's not how you spell hopeful. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I run two of these. Alright, so is that it for creatures? Yes, and that's it for creatures. So right now we are running 5 artifacts, 22 creatures, and 20 lands. Wait, 22 creatures? Yes. Uh oh, I have 23. Oh wait, I'm supposed to have 23. Oh, okay. I just thought I doubled up something wrong. Nope, I didn't double up something. Oh, okay, because I assume for most of the regular. I assumed actually for every single one of the regulars you're running two. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Alright. So now these cards consist of sorceries, instants, and I think I have a few, one or two enchantments in here. Mm-hmm. So the first one is increasing devotion. What this card is, as I put five one one human creature tokens onto the battlefield, if increasing devotion was cast from the graveyard, put ten instead. How many? Um, I run three of these. These this card is fairly pricey. It's five. It's a five for five one ones, which made it worth it. And then it is nine for ten one ones after it's been casted once. Use flashback its ability, which allows you to cast it from the graveyard. Then after you do that once, you exile it. So the later the further into the game you get, if you have this card in your graveyard, it is really useful. Um, the next card is Sky Reaping. So Sky Reaping deals damage to each creature with flying equal to your devotion to green. I played this card because um, my deck seriously lacks defense from flying creatures. Uh, so I use this to get rid of that. How many of these? Three. The next one is Defend the Hearth. Uh, This is a uh, very cheap card to prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to players. Um, I run two of these. The next one is Spear of Heloid. Or Heloid. Um, What this does is all creatures I control get plus one, plus one, and I can destroy a target creature that deals damage to you this turn, the turn of casting it. I run two of these. Next one is Bow of Nylia, which attacking creatures I control have death touch. So if I block a creature, or if I deal damage to a creature, that creature automatically dies regardless of its power or toughness. Mm -hmm. I run two of those. And... That's 60 if I count, correct? Yes, that is 60. Um, yeah. So, that is how you build a deck. That is equal 60 cards, which is the minimum, and... Should be the maximum. <laughs> For anyone who knows what they're doing, it should be your maximum. Yeah. So, uh, one thing that I didn't mention is if we look at one of their guards, it says Legendary. 
What that means is you can only have one legendary of that exact name on the field at the same time. Which is why I only run one of each, because I don't want to risk having multiple in my hand and having to get to the point where mm -hmm. I have to discard one of them. So I just run one in my hand and I run three different gods. Okay, and then Sam's running that now. Since I am Greg, I have to add one extra forest to the deck. Because I'm the same way in Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't run 40 cards, I run 41. Magic, I run 61. Okay, and so, I'm just going to save this. Yeah, I'm going to save it too so I don't lose it. And after... And I think this is a wrap-up. Yeah, so, we're about 20 minutes, for, so... Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, uh, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.